These are my tools to create awesome PS3 tutorials. Let's do this. Hey guys, this is Versatile from VSC Power, now hosted on Project Phoenix Media. So in today's video, I thought it would be nice to do a uh, tips and tricks video for users who are trying to downgrade a PS3 Slim that's compatible with the E3 Flasher and some of the tricks that I've used and noticed to make things a little bit easier. This is actually my second PS3 Slim that I recently acquired, so I was able to successfully downgrade it in one try, and that's awesome. No yellow lights of death, no errors, and let me show you some tricks that I did uh, this second time around for my PS3 Slim. So, one thing you'll notice is it's very important to have a clamp system to secure your E3 flasher clip to your motherboard. This just happened to be a motherboard where the, where the NOR chip is right here in this location. So one of the things that you want to do is when you apply your clip, you want to make sure you have enough even pressure across both sides of the contacts, the left hand side and the right hand side. In order to make sure, one easy way to make sure you have enabled that even pressure on the contacts is to put like a coin on top of the E3 flasher clip. So in my case, I put like a quarter and then using this clamp, just, just go ahead and push it down like so. Now when you, when you tighten it down, you don't want to go so tight that it's super snug and you're going to damage your E3 flasher clip as well as possibly the NOR chip. So what you want to do is imagine that your E3 flasher clip is right here and then when you go down, lightly touch the top of it and then maybe do like one turn or another quarter turn on top and it'll be nice and snug and you're good to go. So that's my uh, clamp system. And then just in case, because I don't want to short anything out, I put some electrical tape here on the bottom and on the top here. It might be overkill, but it's better to be safe than sorry, so that's what I did for this clamp here. Now in terms of the E3 flasher clip, what I ended up doing was, um, first you want to make sure that your E3 flasher clip is flush with the motherboard. It might be tough to see, but there are some little resistors and IC components all around the NOR chip. So what you want to do is maybe take like a very thin uh, flathead screwdriver like this here and shave down the left hand side and right hand side of the E3 flasher clip. That could possibly help you when you put your E3 flasher clip on the motherboard and you notice that you get some E3 uh, flasher errors later on when you try to do any kind of downgrade or dumps, you know. So what I did was I put the E3 flasher clip on first and then I put the coin on top and then you put the clamp on top of that. So that's how that works. And uh, let me just take this off here and show you what I did. Now in terms of taping, what I ended up doing was I first I used a little bit of scotch tape to tape the clamp, to tape the E3 flasher clip down first. And then I put the quarter on top, tape that down, and then go ahead and use the clamp on top of that. So it's just a way to make sure that everything is secure and not gonna fall apart when you are um, using the clamp basically. So let me go ahead and take this off real quick here. And uh, for fun, if you haven't noticed already, what I'm going to do is in the video, I'm going to have like a fast forward video snapshot of me downgrading the PS3 Slim. And you'll see that all eight LEDs uh, have illuminated. And that's how you know you have successfully downgraded your PS3 Slim. And what I want to do next is I'm going to put everything back together, put a new thermal paste on the CPU and GPU using Arctic Silver 5. And then we're good to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull the clip off. I don't want to break this, I'm just going to be careful. Yeah, it's on tight because I snugged it on so tight with the clamp. Come on. Alright. Pull this off here and we're good to go. So, if you're having trouble with your E3 flash clip, it doesn't hurt before you begin the process to maybe clean your NOR chip and your E3 flasher clip with some isopropyl alcohol. So this one just happened to be 91%, but you can also use 50% as well. You know, so you use this, and then you can use like a cotton swab, like this guy, sort of just apply it here, apply it here, and apply it here to the NOR chip, and maybe over here on the other end of this E3 flasher clip cable, and then also to the E3 flasher itself. So that's how you make sure you have a good, nice, clean connection and um, yeah, we should be good to go from that standpoint.
You also want to make sure that when you apply the E3 flashing clip, you do not want to damage it, um, either the clip itself or these contacts. Otherwise, you're going to have to go buy a new E3 flasher clip. So that could be a pain, of course. And one other item I was going to mention about this E3 flasher clip is make sure that when you apply the pressure that it's dead center with the clamp. You don't want to be the clamp off center like here. You want to be dead center in here and then you'll be good to go. So that's pretty much um, that about the E3 flasher clip. And here is what I was talking about about shaving it. So when you want to shave it, just go shave it like this, you know, from top to bottom. There's like a ridge here. So just shave it down, like literally scratch it off, right? And do the same thing on the other side. Literally just scratch it off with your uh, screwdriver. But you don't want to scratch it too much that you're going to actually get inside and damage the internal contact. So that's what you do not want to do. So that is um, some tips there in regards to the E3 flasher clip. Um, more likely than not, you're going to probably be successful if you have a PS3 Slim. The PS3 Fat is a little bit more difficult because you cannot employ a clamp method for the PS3 flat, Fat. Excuse me. So you're going to have to use like cotton balls or hard foam or a combination of coins to keep that pressure on the E3 flasher clip if you have a Fat PS3. Uh, some other tips is when you're going to do your flash, Make sure that you do not move anything around, otherwise you might potentially brick your PS3. My first time around I had a yellow light of death. You see my other video, I show you how to unbrick your PS3 from that soft brick, basically. And then um, also what you want to do is when you put everything back together, you probably want to put a new uh, thermal paste onto your CPU and GPU. So this is a recap, here's Arctic Silver 5. Just use a pea size amount on your CPU and your GPU when you reapply the heat sink back onto the motherboard. And then one last tip I have is on the bottom side of this motherboard, you notice that I use some cardboard here. Other people, they use paper um, or foam, I guess. I just decide to use cardboard and I sort of have it almost the tracing of this metal bracket here. It just makes it a little bit easier and you have a, a, a peace of mind when you try to secure these screws here one by one by one. And in order to make sure I don't damage any of the contacts on the bottom of the motherboard, you've noticed that in this video and in previous videos, I have a piece of poster board, you know, a, a, a foam board. It's probably not required, but I just want to make sure that you don't damage anything when you're doing this E3 flasher process. So that's pretty much it for today's uh, tips and tricks. Um, one more thing before I forget, I did have a hard time removing the screws from the motherboard shield. So this particular shield, I had a hard time removing these five screws. So what I ended up doing was I had to use like a power drill. So I had to use the power drill to remove those screws. I tried to use a screwdriver. I could not do it by hand. You do not want to strip your screws, otherwise you could potentially be screwed. So make sure you have the right tools, take your time, don't rush it through, and you should be good to go. And of course, if you have any issues with your downgrading process, leave a comment on the YouTube page and we can discuss it further. So that is today's video tutorial. You guys have any nitpicky questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.